not sure I'm actually alive. This may be pre-recorded. Did I play any of the Timeless Metagame Challenge? No, I haven't played Timeless in a while. I really haven't played anything but Cube for the past, I don't know, month or two. Maybe with the new set I'll try some of the other formats again. Well, this is an easy pick. I have to take Emmerich Cole Path 1, pick 1. Even though Archangel Avison is probably the best card. Menagerie Curator. There probably aren't many El other Eldrazis, but I'll just take Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I don't think it's that hard to have a pretty good Emrakul deck. This is probably just Bloodstained Mire. It's a land that matches the Fable of the Mirror Breaker in color. This is probably a pretty good pack. Two cards are already gone, and there's still a fetch land in it, and Voice of Resurgence, and a Trax and a Neuro. There's only like one or two real stinkers of cards. Like Karn Silex, is, that one's not good. <laughs> So, if I really want to go crazy on the arrow, there's Mistress Bauble. This card doesn't really have much else in the way of, like, good uses in this cube, though. There's the clock, which is like anti synergy with Emrakul, getting rid of your graveyard. I guess I don't really want either of these red cards particularly. I'll take the bobble and we'll see what happens. Oh man, this thing is still in the back. This card is so good. But how, how am I going to have a white-red Emrakul deck? How's that going to work? I guess I'll just take Priest of Forgotten Gods. This is another card that if you get it early on so you can kind of draft around it, it's quite strong. I 
Oh, it's everyone's favorite card, Souls of the Lost. I've yet to figure out why you would ever put this in a deck. There's more of an opportunist, which I guess in theory synergizes with Priest of Forgotten Gods, but I think this card's just kind of underpowered. I'll just take a land. Another land. Or an enchantment creature dog. I didn't realize there was other dogs in the cube. I know that Selfless Savior is a dog, because I've withdrawn a card off a of Menagerie Curator with it before, but I didn't know I had other, there were other dogs you have to worry about. I do kind of like being, if I'm going to be black-red, I don't mind being white as well. This is really good types for Emrakul. And it's also good with Priest of Forgotten Gods, so I guess I'll take it. This deck's maybe on the way to being a train wreck, but maybe not. Ooh, another fetch land. How can there be a fetch land? Pack one, pick eight. Judas, the Scourge Diva. This is a pretty good card with uh, Priest of Forgotten Gods in that type of deck. I'm kind of inclined, though, just to pick volcanic spite because one of the things that's going on with this cube is that there's just a lot of good certainly in like red black there's just a lot of good three drops i don't think you're ever gonna get to the end of a draft and be like wow i really wish i had another three drop for my black red deck uh wow well, tracks have made it all the way around I'm not going to try to add Atraxa to this mess that I'm working with. I'm already a base red deck that's got enough problems going on. Although Atraxa, I would have a variety of types, so I would get a lot of cards with it if I was able to resolve it. I'll just take a land. Uh, we have Play with Fire, which is, I think, pretty underwhelming. If I was going to play a one red removal spell, this would be the right kind of deck to have Unholy Heat in. I guess I'll take it, though. I'm, I'm not going to play through those Planeswalkers. I really don't want to have to have blue mana in my deck. Uh, this thing's okay. I could see it making my deck, maybe. Oh, the Souls of the Lost. I was always hoping I would get one of those from my sideboard. This I might actually play. Seems like I probably have a pretty good setup for it. I've got Priest of Forgotten Gods. I, I want to have a Planeswalker in my deck with Emrakul, and... Already got a couple cheap instants and sorceries. All good things. So this pack, we have Virtue of Persistence. Which is a little bit awkward, I would say. This really isn't a very good thing unless you're going to get to cast the uh, double black enchantment part of it card, and I don't know if I'm a deck that's going to be all about that. I think I'll just take Solemn Simulacrum. I want to play three colors. I'm going to play Emrakul, like, even if I shouldn't, I'm going to play it, so we have to draft with that in mind. This pack has some really good cards in it. Sublime Epiphany. And Breach, although I've come down on Breach a fair amount. I was all about it when the cube first came out, but now I, I do think it's a little bit on the expensive side for what it does. We've got Reckoner Bank Buster. I think I'm just going to go with the land, though. Getting good lands to get with your fetches is pretty awesome. I do... I, it, I, would really like to pick up some land to go with the Flooded Strand, so this isn't just getting me a basic plans. Ooh, this is an interesting pack. So we have the Lutri. Which would obviously be fine. There's also Heartless Act, Fatal Push, Blood Chief's Thirst. 
I think I'm going to go with the Lutri, and I think I'm probably going to wheel a card I'll be pretty happy to play out of this pack. Because, like, any of the four black removal spells I'd be pretty happy with. I think Decadent Dragon I probably would be happy with. Um, and Touch the Spirit Realm I would be happy with. And even the Evangelist I might be happy with. Would not play Rabbit Battery. Or Stoke the Flames, probably. I do need to remember, though, like, I really don't like the way that Arena works where I can't just mark this as my companion right now. Because half the time that I pick Lutri, I forget to set it as my companion and I don't get to use it. Which is kind of lame. Probably I should take a spell here over this land. I picked lands pretty highly and I'm a little bit behind on spells. I think I'll go with Lord Skitter, the Sewer King. It's a good card with Priest of Forgotten Gods. Is it better than the Legion War Boss? Probably it is. Not being forced to attack with the 1-1s one is probably nice some of the time. So we've got Pylon, which is another good card, for, both for setting up Emrakul and for, like, if you want to be this small token kind of deck. I'm really hoping I see Crucius, which at this point it would probably be in pack three if it's going to show up at all. I don't think I passed it. Got some Planeswalkers. This is the Planeswalker that goes with Emrakul. But I also think it's not a particularly good Planeswalker in this cube. In general, there aren't that many one toughness things. I think I'm going to go with the Gutter Ball. It's real good with Priest of Forgotten Gods and. I do want some more cheap cards. Murderer's Cut, which is not friends with Emrakul. And a Fiomancer. This is what I was... I forget what card... Oh, Judith. Where I was saying, like, you're always going to get enough three mana cards in your red-black deck. That you shouldn't prioritize them at all. And I mean, this is what I was talking about. Deadly Dispute seems perfect for me. There's a Fateful Absence, but there's also Mephit's Enthusiasm, which is probably just better. I think next pack is the pack where I thought I was going to wheel something. No, it's the one after this. Uh, I'm not going to play with any of these cards. And the Fatal Push Wield. Normally I would be all about the Fatal Push, but I feel like I have a lot of removal and not that many creatures. This also just isn't that good. I'll just take Fatal Push. Oh, Fatal Push is a payoff for the bauble. Nice. This is another three drop in black red. This one might not make my deck though. Another three drop. This one is definitely not going to make my deck. I would play the, the Jewel Mine Overseer. This guy's a little bit more situational slash Hard to use. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. Somebody made a comment in one of my videos that they, they liked that card for some reason. But I, I don't know what the reason was, because reading it, there's not a lot to like about this. Hmm. So right now I've got five lands. Which means I'd be, I'm probably going to add 12 more lands to my deck, so I'm looking for 6 spells out of this pack at a minimum. And realistically, I could play a couple of these cards if I had to. So this, I think, is a choice between this Chandra, which is a very good card, and the Noxious Gearhawk, which is another good card. I think I'm going to go with this Chandra. It's cheaper. It also does synergize with this Chandra. Like, if you can just be using the zero ability... To ultimate this really quickly, you can win games like that. It's a little bit weird, but it does come up. So we've got another fetch. I, I haven't gotten anything yet that makes the Flooded Strand good. I'm really hoping to see the Savoy Triome. 
I'm not going to take Burn Down the House or Ember Cleave. I think I'm just going to take Preacher of the Schism, which I think is a pretty strong 3-drop. Yet another strong 3-drop. I don't think I need a removal spell badly enough to take Infernal Grasp. I think it's really just Wooded Foothills or Preacher of the Schism. I think Preacher of the Schism is actually, like, an above the curve enough that it's worth picking there. I'm not going to pick Goblin Bombardment. I could take Polluted Delta. I could take the Soren, which has a bizarrely high win rate. Or I could take Goldspan. Goldspan's probably actually pretty good against pretty good in this deck. And I wouldn't mind having a couple more expensive cards. It's good in this deck in the sense that like I've got a decent amount of two mana removal. It works well with it. I want Magda. It wouldn't be bad to have another two drop. There's also the five color pathway. I think I'll just go with Magda. I do have a bunch of stuff that makes treasures now, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm not going to take Elder Dragon War. I think I have too many small creatures in my deck for it to be particularly good. Would I prefer Bone Crusher Giant or Electrostatic Blast? Probably Bone Crusher Giant. An all around good card. Ah, there's the Jewel Mine Overseer, which I did say I would play. I think I'm going to take a Red Black Land over it, though. Because I really. I've passed on a few good three drops, and I still just have a million of them. And this pack. This pack's really good if you want to be able to mulligan in the middle of the game. Not so good if you want to put the cards in your deck and play with them. Very sad that I did not see Crucius. Also very sad that there's a Jadar, which I think would be pretty good for my deck. Yeah, I think I have to take Jadar over Sacred Foundry, even though Sacred Foundry would be great, because it would make the Flooded Strand a lot better. Oh, but here, this is a, I can put this in my deck to go with the Flooded Strand. That's fine. I don't think I want to play any of these. Goblin Bombardment wields, but somehow a fetch land wield. Weird. Do I want Undercity Plunder or Plarg? I'll take Plarg. There's even Monastery Mentor, which would be kind of good as well, but again, I just... When you draft this archetype, you just wind up with so many cards that cost three mana. It's so disappointing not to have gotten Crucius. All right. Right away, I need to do the step that I know I would forget if I didn't do it. How many lands did they put in my deck? 17, so I have one more card than I probably want. It should probably be a two mana card that I'm cutting. So the options are Plarg. I think Rip Apart would be cuttable. I feel like those are my worst cards. Probably just cut rip rip apart. Somehow that led to me not having a planes in my deck anymore. Is that gonna be okay? So this fetch and this fetch. Oh and this fetch. So all three of my fetches get white. And then I've got 
Clifftop Retreat and Isolated Chapel. And somehow my only white card is the Spirited Companion. Huh. I feel like something went a little bit awry here. But okay. I guess it makes sense not to play a Plains. Check out this tweet that I saw on Twitter today. In the stupid, like, this is some account that, I don't know, Elon Musk has decided that I should just receive tweets from. It was very strange to see it show up, though. Because for people who can't tell, that's Huey, William Jensen's Twitter picture. How often do I expect to play Plargs backside? Probably never. So I would like to be able to get a red mana with this, but my deck is not capable of doing that. I guess I do need to be careful with this Flooded Strand if I'm not playing a Plains. Because I only have one land that it can get. Come on, do nothing. Shielded Z-Dict. Murderous Repair. We're done here. Yeah, that's not so good. How are we doing on types for Emrakul? Emrakul's down to 10 mana already. Oh, today's my I'll deal damage, day. why not? Come oh, on, Fable the Mirror Breaker off the top. is aggressive with their scrying. They don't even want to wait to see what's happening before they decide. They're just like, I can't, I can't afford to wait. Just let me get this out of the way. Now, if this Bonecrusher Giant was an alchemy card, I would get two of them in the adventure zone. Sadly, I do not. Distractions. Let's make this quick. I'll stop when I get my answers. I'll use the volcanic spite so I can get rid of this isolated is. chapel and I'll save the moment impact. A potentially larger thing. Oh, typical. Simply don't crush it this turn. How are we doing on types? We got four. Okay, is this exile? No. Hmm. Getting to sense there's going to be a problem here. I guess I should have played this free combat just to get the creature.
more problems for me. I don't think my deck is capable of winning this game at, any, at this point. Obviously, I'm just going to bring this back with Scarab God, so that's not good for me. But I guess I bought myself another turn in some sense. I think it's going to come back as something I can't fatal push. Oh, and they have zombies with the Scarab God, Scarab God, Grave Titan. Very good deck building by the opponent. I like that they don't attack me. It gives me hope. Actually, the fact that I just drew that Emrakul gives me hope, too. Can't fatal push this. Which that's not good for me. I'm taking a lot of Scarab God-related damage. I do have two rats, so that could help me, maybe. They went five top on their scry? Holy cow, that's not good. I can't even live if I top deck and land for the Emmerich goal because I'd die to the Scarab God trigger, I would assume. Yeah. That was a rough one. Oh no. The sand's no good, because the flooded strand can only get the Rafine's Tower. It doesn't make a ton of sense to play the Priest of Forgotten Gods this turn because there's nothing that... I, I guess it's possible they would play something where I would want to just play Jadar and immediately kill it, maybe. Maybe that would have made more sense. Oh, I definitely should have attacked. I'm minus two damage, that's not good. Okay, Scarab God making an Encore appearance.
I might be able to win this game if this is their their best play for the turn. Options like the Mephit's Enthusiasm and Magda. Get to attack. I'll have some mana. Or I could play Goldspan, then Mephit's Enthusiasm, but then I have to sack my Jadar, which probably makes the. The Priest of Forgotten God's a lot worse next turn. This seems better to me. I messed up though, I should have played the Magda. Three combat. So that I could have sacked that token. That was bad. I know you get this thing. Yeah, I screwed up. Now oh, I've got two black mana, but it's in my end step. And I'm not going to get the token to attack with it next turn either. That was bad. I guess I probably couldn't have used the mana, but I'm, I'm probably going to miss two damage because of the way I played. And I missed two damage on the third turn as well. Bet they're, I'm betting they wished that they killed that faster. Please don't have a counter spell. good for me. Can I win if I find Emrakul? The type situation is okay. It's not Emrakul.
Plarg is or Plarg has arrived to save the day. I don't think I'm gonna play Plarg on the backside at all. I guess my deck is capable of doing it though. I do have white mana. If they want to spend their mana and sack their Stalactite Stalker to kill Magda, they're welcome to. I don't know what it is about reading this card that would make someone put it in their deck. It seems really bad to me. I guess I shouldn't have let them block. I should have. I could have just gone fatal push, Plarg. Once they let me get the treasure, I was thinking I'm just going to play Solemn Simulacrum and be happy. Do they. They don't even get the counter from their third land dying. Get to just hit them with gold span. Maybe this is all like a long con to bait out all of my removal so I don't have removal for the stalag stalactite stalker. And it'll become a very important card at some point. I'm guessing none of that's going to actually be what happens. Alternately, I could play a land and get the Lutri in my hand, and being able to, like, Lutri Mythic Enthusiasm next turn. I think this is fine. Treasure, at least. What does this ability do? Let's find out. Spin the wheel. And the flooded strand has no fetchable targets left in my deck, so I'm not going to put that one into play. 
I'll either discard it to Plark or I'll discard it to Fable of the Mirror Breaker if the game lasts a long time. Come on, something good. This has been Plarg's greatest game ever, I would have to say. Just hanging out. Finding me three drops. Brutal. Bobble. So, if say they eat this, they die. So they block Plark, they die. So they have to trade this Bone Crusher Giant to not be dead. They just went for dead. I respect that. I'm going to play this game, I am excellent. The only dispute would be a good card to have if things go well for me. Like if the Chandra's in play on turn 5 or something, but I think if, if that's happening... then I don't really need to worry about having to have the dispute. I guess I'm going to play the Preacher of the Schism this turn. I'd kind of like to... Ideally, they play like a three-drop creature next turn, and I get to just get him with Chandra, so Acolyte of the Flame. Also, there are... Like, they could have Negate in addition to Make Disappear and... Sensor, which I'd rather Chandra not get countered. Hmm. Not seems like whatever I do is going to get countered, so I'll we'll just do this instead. End of turn, just flash and loot tree. Probably. It's not often that you see a spell resolving that puts cards on the bottom of both people's decks. Or did that shuffle in? I think they might have shuffled it into their deck. So not just going on the bottom. Let's get some intel about what's going on over there. Oh, 
They're about to draw a ledger shredder. to use the Heartless Act on Lutri at least, which means that it's possible that I actually get a priest of Forgotten Gods on the I won't hide from the world. Hurry. Sadly, this does not hit Planeswalkers. We need to move quickly. Oh, they absorb the energy onto the Ledger Shredder, so it, it only cost one mana. Wow. I think I'm winning at this point. I can't kill the... Priest of Forgotten Gods. What should I do to start? I think I'll make tokens. You'll get him, but say hi to my fiery friends. This is going to go bad if they have a counter. That's unfortunate. Don't make another move. I should have done that before I decided to attack. Oh, get him, Clark. No time for a break. Rude. So I guess I can kill that at least, though.
Goodbye, zombie. Alright, this is going to be an exciting game now. Can a Priest of Forgotten Gods and Plarg defeat a Shark Typhoon? It's sitting in play. It's looking a little bit tougher. I think I'm just going to cast, cast the Jadar in right now. What can I get? Heartless Act. Ugh. Gross. How many types do we have in the graveyard? And would Emrakul even save me? I think Emrakul would save me. I think it would kill him fast enough that... That's a lot of good cards. Ooh. All right, maybe they'll die to the zombie attacking them. Well, that didn't work. That was my best plan. Not a strong showing. Didn't even get to Emrakul at all. Now what? There's a wooded foothills. I like that. I don't think any of these other cards are anything special. Nissa, second pick. Sign me up. I need the Sworn Clex to wheel. It's probably not going to happen. This pack has a lot of bad cards in it. What a strange and magnificent world. It's 
So what is that? There's a tiny person, Nissa. And I do already have a wooded foothills, which makes this thing better. Mono green Nissa tribal. I'll go with Nissa tribal. I don't know the mono green. Maybe I'll be able to find some other colored Nissas. I do think Priest of Forgotten the Gods is very good in this cube, but not in a black green deck. There's. I don't like this Vivian Reed very much. I think it's kind of below par for a five drop. I think Selfless Spirit's pretty good. Wow, this pack has a lot of bad cards in it. I don't even want any of these. Guess I'll take a land. And I would probably prefer to have my green mana be more forests if I can have Nissa in my deck. More cards I don't want. I guess I'm taking a symbol of the team. I don't think I've cast this yet in this cube. Definitely, if I'm going to be a two-color green deck, I would want to be green-white, so I will take Kellen. Seek his chariot wield? How did I get this lucky? This is 
is mostly cards that don't do anything. Is this an elemental dragon? No, it's a dragon spirit. So I, pr I would like to get at least one other elf or elemental. So if I had drawn this in Wooded Foothills, I can do the combo. I think I need to replace a tube. If you're a guitar amplifier repairman and you're you're watching this, can you can you make yourself known in the chat? Don't everybody type in the chat at once though. Let's keep it nice and orderly. Do I want wedding announcement or like werewolf pack leader? Probably wedding announcement. You only repair electric accordions? Man, so close. gotten any of the good green white cards it's a bit concerning but i'm 100 percent locked in i'm committed to green white i liked courser so much in vintage cube but it's not nearly as good in this cube because there's so few ways to control the top of your library and there's not very many ways to play more than one land a turn i think i'm just gonna take once upon a time You hear that crackle? It's not supposed to be doing that. I don't know if it's... It's probably loud enough that it comes through. Giver of Runes or Lovestruck Beast? I'll go with Giver of Runes. I feel like that's a close pick. It is loud enough. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. Do you want March of the Other March of Otherworldly Light? Portable hole or pelt collector. I think I'll go with March of Otherworldly Light. I don't know. I haven't had that one before in this cube. It seems mediocre, but the other options were also mediocre. Adeline. Adeline is really, really good. But I don't like having a double white three drop, but I think I'm going to take it anyway. It sounds like white noise. It doesn't bother me, but it bothers me because it, I think that it means that one of my preamp tubes has gone bad, which is a pain in the neck because it means I have to take the amp apart, which I have like one of the most difficult amps to do that on. And then I have to either replace all the preamp tubes, which is a lot, or figure out which one is bad, which is a hassle. So it's all bad, is what I'm saying. Can I do anything cool with the Soul Cauldron? I can turn all my creatures into selfless spirits. That's pretty awesome. Or Giver of Runes. That's kind of awesome. I'll try that. So far, I haven't really seen the Soul Cauldron do anything, but maybe I can get enough stuff to make it do something.
See, I need an amp repair person to be in the chat so they can give me a tip for how I can figure out which preamp tube is doing that. Tired of losing the scarab god? No, I'm not tired of it. I'm willing to continue doing it. The jewel mine overseer. It's so weird that nobody ever wants to take souls of the lost out of the pack. Where's all the souls of the lost lovers? Is this card better or worse than Legion's Landing? Legion's Landing's another candidate for worst card in the cube to me, but I think it's got to be souls of the lost. Oh man, older Raven Guard Marshal. That could be a fun one. I need some more lands. Because right now I only have the wooded foothills and it can't even get white mana. Maybe I'm not even, maybe I wasn't supposed to be green. I don't know, the, the, the Seekers Chariot wield. And I have Nyssa. It's hard for me to not play those two cards. Is this the only triome that the Wooded Foothills can't fetch? I think it is. That's unfortunate. Definitely behind here. I need a good pack. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to first pick Windswept Teeth because I don't like being mana screwed. And it's good with Nyssa and Oracle of Moldiah. And then I'm going to wield Deep Root Wayfinder. And I'm going to feel very smart for having two fetch lands to go with the Deep Root Wayfinder. Alright, here's what's going to happen out of this pack. I'm going to take Indotha Triumph and feel pretty terrible about it. Is it turns on my wooded foothills. So at this point, I'm really behind on playable spells. What do we got that we're not yet working with? A blade splicer? Probably going to have to play that one. Oh, the payoff for white green has hit. Voice of Resurgence. But there's also a Lanor Elves. I guess I'm going to take Lionel Rells and just hope the Voice of Resurgence wheels. There's no way the Lionel Rells is going to wheel. And this is my first one. I guess it's my second one drop. Voice of Resurgence is like one of the reasons to be white green. But Lionel Elves also gives me another ability to give to my creatures with the Soul Cauldron. So that's nice. I'm definitely not going to pick Marari's Wake. We'll cross that one off to start. I could take the Ranger Captain Abuse or the Senate Scout. I kind of want to just take Ranger Captain Abuse. I like that card. So now I've got got two elves to get with Nyssa. Reveal the top card of your library until you... Okay, so you cascade into an elf or an elemental. You, you don't get to choose. The Foundry Groundbreaker. I do like that card. I really don't like playing with Sylvala. It's hard to cast. It can backfire on you because your opponent can draw cards off of it. And, like, 
It's a three drop that you have to untap with. There's a lot not to like about it, I would say. Do I do enough with Monastery Mentor? Non-creature spells. Kind of not really. There's the Crucius I needed last draft. Hmm. Green was definitely not particularly open this draft. Yuck. Might I might actually just play this closer. Oh, but the deep root wayfinder wield. We knew that was gonna happen. Now I just need I need voice of resurgence out of this pack, I think, or is it the it's the next pack. It's not this pack, it's the one after. This pack's gonna be bad. This is the pack I took the Indatha Trium out of the first time. Uh, the Mall of the Skyclaves. I'd rather not play with that card, but maybe I will. Uh, the Nissa didn't wheel. I mean, I do get Skyclave Apparition, which is quite good, but... Or the Voice of Resurgence didn't wheel. I really wanted the Voice of Resurgence to wheel. The Spellbinder wheeled. That's kind of weird. I'm surprised at that one. Is it this Thursday that the the new set is out on Arena? The sixth, which is Tuesday. I don't think I've deleted my last few videos, but they, they were streams, not normal videos. So you have to look under like the live tab to find them. If you're looking at my channel. All right, this deck didn't turn out very good. Oh, if I'd gotten the Usher of the Fallen instead of the Benalish Knight Commander and I got it under the Soul Cauldron, I would have had been able to have all of my creatures boast. That would have helped me. This is not a very good green-white deck, but green-white is a great combination. It will never let me down. But why would you want to go and watch an old video of me streaming Cube when you could watch this video right now? Or maybe you're not watching it right now. Maybe you're watching a replay of it in the future when I've already deleted the other videos. I'm not sure that that's how that works, but maybe. Is is there a, a like a is there a way when you're watching a replay of a video on YouTube, like a replay of a live thing? And you watch it a few days later, and you if you type something in the chat, does it travel back in time to show up when it would have been live? Or does YouTube not let you do that yet?
maybe it won't attack. I'll take the coward's way out. I'm very suspicious about someone who has four mana and doesn't counter my spell. Okay, I need that soul cauldron so I can get, get this thing out of their graveyard. Of course, there aren't very many ways to reanimate it. But one of the ways to reanimate it... Well, okay, that's one of them. I was going to say one of the other ways is... Uh, the the five-mana Gix card. Cruelty of Gix. Okay. We're going to have some problems this game. And I have no idea how I'm going to work them out. But maybe I will. Oh, no. The Skyclave Apparition is going to put a damper on things. I think the way I'm going to work out the problems this game is by conceding and moving on to the next game. Maybe they deck themselves. Okay, yeah. All right. It's good. good thought process. This is turn five Atraxa, not turn... Or no, it is turn four Atraxa. You're right. Turn four Atraxa, and they were on the play. Maybe they'll time out trying to make this decision. Oh, they t <laughs> swords to pull shares too. Yikes. This is gonna be a rough one. It's gonna be a real rough one. Don't worry, I've got a plan. You see, you think I'm unfavored in this spot? I think I've got them right where I want them. Somehow they have a Soul Cauldron 2 in their deck? This is very strange. I should have Soul Cauldron before they untapped, probably. Didn't realize that. Okay. See what they're trying what what they're going for here. I must go.
Maybe I should have put the counter on the AO. I didn't want them to be able to virtue of persistence the... Forest. I definitely should have put it on one of the things that wasn't the forest. I need to have as many of my things having giver of runes. counters as possible because this game this game is not completely lost the soul cauldron is gonna be pretty powerful for me i think i just screwed up with it that one turn I have 16 cards left, and they have 10. This is not optional, so I can force them to draw cards. That could come in handy. Confident, you're just underwhelming. Remember your training. If this soul cauldron leaves the battlefield, do my creatures lose the abilities? It, they do. I need the soul cauldron to stay in play. How about that? They just messed up pretty bad, I think.
Although I, I really messed up. It, bad that I put an extra counter on the forest instead of the, the AO. Like, if this land where elves had a counter on it right now... So that it was, it could also tap to give something protection, it, it, I'd be in much better shape. me if I tap out. Ugh, I could have won this game. Well, I couldn't have won this game if they had just Skyclave Apparition of the Agatha Soul Cauldron. And it's not even clear that I would win the game, but I, this turn would have been so much better if I had put the, the turn I put the counter on the forest, I just put it on the AO. Because now I need the top deck of flying creatures. Which I probably don't have very many flying creatures in my deck. What's my favorite color you mean in this cube? Actually, I think white might be my favorite color. Which is weird. Usually I hate white and cube, but... I think there's a bunch of white cards that tend to go kind of late that are actually very good. My least favorite card in this cube has to be Field of the Dead. What it lacks in being good, it doesn't make up for in other ways. gonna have a Hawana hanging out. And I have to hope that we don't draw anything that makes it too scary. plan failed. I did manage, did manage to get rid of their strangle though. That's kind of nice. It's about to get pretty ugly though.
So far I have not been enjoying having this as the card. This removal spell, it's, it seemed a, way worse than uh, Fateful Absence. Everything's starting to turn around. Maybe a little. Depends how bad their hand is. That's probably a sign their hand might be kind of bad. If they're just jumping because they want to have another card. be aggressive. The uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler kills me in a few turns. I might want to crack this fetch land just to try to find a card that would have some effect on the game. Or I'm just dead. Tapped my Adeline. These have been some rough games. things are looking up. They're not looking up anymore. My deep point finder died. I put all of my hopes on that guy.
Oh no, it tapped white mana to do that? That's not good. Oh, I let it. That was bad. Not bad, they're just gonna take a mulligan. Turn four, mulligan. I'll take it. They haven't already used the plow, right? So what could they even have? I could burn a counter from Agatha's Soul called in to keep this on two loyalty, but or to keep it on three loyalty, but I think I'm fine having it go to two. We haven't gotten any cool abilities. I'm getting robbed. It's cost me a point of damage, but I get a plus one plus one counter at some point down the road. Or not. Game mulligans turned into almost a real card. It's a 3-3 three, three Oracle of Moldiah. That's going to come in handy. Forget how in this works. This doesn't actually cost damage to do. This is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. We can save everyone. I think I'm just dead on board. You wow, this is this is the first O3 in a while. Oh, but they why didn't they deal more damage to me? Forgot to use my soul cauldron. I 
was confused by what just happened. I guess they're just having fun. Was that someone in the chat who just wanted to give me a free win? Because I don't understand what just happened. They're forcing me to play that deck for more games. There aren't even that many people watching. The odds of it actually being someone in the chat who's just forcing me to play my deck more aren't that good. But also, I don't really—I can't really explain why that happened. Otherwise, I guess I'm going to March of Otherworldly Light, the Utopia Sprawl. Should I go after Agent of Rafine, or should I go after Llanowar Elves? I kind of feel like my deck has enough bad cards in it that the Agent of Rafine won't be good against me. Opinions on this, on the 5 mana Teferi in this cube? It's decent. I don't think it's anything special, but it's good enough. One thing that's a little bit awkward about it is I don't think that there's like a... I, I think most of the white cards don't really want to be in a, like a real controlling deck. And the blue cards mostly do. So I, I think white-blue is kind of a hard color pair, but I think the card to ferry itself is actually pretty good. I suppose is my full answer. Final answer, full answer. going to bounce the chariot. Maybe what they did was better for them. I don't know. Stolen blades. Rude. Oh, that's a good point. If I can just get this agent of Rafine to die, I will have they've fallen into my they will have fallen into my trap at that point. I 
That might be a ways away, though. I don't think there's any creatures in the yard yet. It's just all fetch lands. The opponent drafted a good deck. They got two fetch lands. It's very smart drafting. And they stole my deep root wayfinder. I like that. I'm more scared about the nightclub bouncer getting copied somehow than I am about the Wayfinder actually connecting. Gilded Goose. I could make a lot of uh, food. Whoa, why didn't... I guess they're planning to tide bind the Soul Cauldron. That's why they didn't... No, they're not... What are they doing? Oh, they're going to tide bind the uh, Giver of Runes. I think that's their plan. Not sure what they're doing over there. Maybe they're just hoping to hit something great that they can play with Agent of the team. Maybe that's the plan. Oh, I triggered the Nyssa. Do I have anything left to get? I have the Oracle of Maldaya. Nice. I didn't realize that was about to happen. I'm glad that it did happen, though.
I was worried they were gonna use Key to the Archive to get Wrath of God, but now that I have these all these Mistress Foundries, it might not save them. They can gain life with their food from the Gilded Goose. Gilded Goose is actually kind of annoying on this board. Taking my windswept teeth back. Thank you very much. So I'm going to force them to spend their mana on the Tide Binder on the Giver of Runes, and then I'm gonna the Ganjo the Brazen Borrower to still have a Lethal Flyer. This actually means there's going to be a card in the graveyard creature, so I can make the Foundry Groundbreaker win combat. Which is nice. So if I put this Oracle of Moldiah in play, they'll be able to see what's going on with the Agent of Rafine. Is that worth it? I guess it is. I should have just left the planes on top of my deck. That would have been what I would do if I was smart. Just force them to Agent of Rafina Plains or not use it. They stole an AO from me? Rude. Yeah, we're all getting in there. Have I ever run into any angle shooters? Um, do, you, do you want me to distinguish angle shooters from like just active cheaters? I once played a person who... I, don't know if to, I, I guess I would consider this an angle shot. They intentionally caused a game... I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that they did this. I mean, they might say that they didn't, but I'm convinced that they intentionally caused a game state to be confused so that they could call a judge over to try to... Like, it was, it, it was all like a, a an attempt at a distraction to get me to not make a play. That I don't remember what the play was exactly. It was like they, they wanted me to not block or... It was something like that. And, like, the whole time this, this judge ruling is going on, I'm just thinking, this person just did all of this to get me, like, to try to manipulate me so I wouldn't block. 
in this spot and I, I had already just decided like I'm gonna block anyway or no I it, it was dumber than that it was like they wanted me to not it, somehow I, had, I decided during the thing that they were trying to manipulate the situation to make me do something that they thought I didn't want to do but I already decided I was gonna do it it was really dumb you think there's a thin line between an angle shooter and like an active cheater uh, I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I, uh, do you, if you know who Casey McCarroll is, I've lost him in the Pro Tour, and I'm convinced that he stacked my deck. Like, that's not angle shooting. He just straight up stacked my deck. Um, I also lost to Jared Betcher in a late round of a GP where I'm pretty sure he stacked my deck as well. Like th that was neither of those were angle shooting. I mean that that was just straight up cheating. I also used to play at Mike Long's local store. I played um, in. There was one year. It, it, there used to be these tournaments called regionals that were like feeders for U.S. nationals. And one year they had uh, regionals in... Mm, I think I'm going to use all my mana this turn. The spell's going to get countered anyway. They had regionals in like a hotel ballroom that had mirrors on the ceiling. And Mike Long would sit... He would sit in his chair like this. And he would tell the judges it was because his doctor had told him that he had a bad back, so he had to sit like this. But between like the fact that he was sitting so he could just look and see his opponent's hand, and you could also just look up at the ceiling and see the reflection of the cards in the opponent's hands, the judges ruled you weren't allowed to look up during the tournament. I, I'm pretty sure Mike was able to see people's cards. Having said all of that, it, the um, I, I actually I think cheating was is like much less of a problem and much less prevalent at high level tournaments than people probably think it is. Like I play I played a lot of matches when I used to play competitive paper. Like I, I played a lot of GPs and PTs and. I, I don't. I, I mean, I think there was like there's two matches where I'm pretty sure I got cheated, and in one of them, it was it was part of a team thing, and my team won the match anyway. And I mean, the Jared Betcher one, he did win the match. It was like it was a spot where I was already locked for top eight of the GP, and I didn't want to just scoop to him. So like I was not paying as much attention during the match as I probably should have been. Because, like, I didn't want to just concede because I didn't want, like, there was no reason for me to just give him in particular a free win. But I also uh, wasn't, like, super invested in the outcome of the match. Whoa! Wasn't expecting that one. I thought I was doing pretty good, but now this is actually going to probably be hard.
What's the worst way to cheat in magic? I mean, like, least effective or, like, most savage? Uh, I'll tell a story for... Well, it was certainly least effective in this scenario. It would probably be very effective if you don't get caught. There, there was a person who was like a somewhat well-known player like a long time ago, like American pro. And there's a story, which I have no idea if it's true or not, so I'm not going to say the guy's name. But his opponent cast turn one duress against him. And when he laid out his, his opening hand, he just had 11 cards in his opening hand. So, like, very, very easy to get caught. But if you don't get caught and you just start with an extra four cards, you it's going to be very effective. Whoa. Why did they block like this? The truth still eludes me. I think if I had mind slavered them, I would have blocked like that probably. What the hell? Like, they lost both their Planeswalker and their token that was going to grow. What was the point of that? Okay. Doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. Should I think about this turn? Or should I just go with my gut? So they need to both have a spell and chump to not die. And with their spells like lightning strike, it doesn't even work. Although if they, it was lightning strike, they could have played it before the soul cauldron resolved. I probably could have. I probably should have started my turn by playing the soul cauldron, given that this is what I wound up doing. That turn that. That's the second game where. It, well, there was that one game where I was basically dead and my opponent conceded, but that game, I have no... Like, those blocks, that turn where they lost their Teferi made no sense at all. I just want to land. 
land gets me closer to Nissa. If I didn't have the Nissa, I would have just taken the Adeline. But... I think this is going to work out better. The Iron Crag. Where's Where's Leafengard to tell me about all of the great ways the Iron Crag, the Iron Crag can transform? Uh, I'll buff this one up. Please don't have Brotherhood's End. My advice for people who are putting treasure map in their deck in this cube would be don't put treasure map in your deck. Those are some weird mountains. I think they're relatively new. I don't know where they're from. They're way better than the, the uh, like, a couple years ago they came out with some that they look like they're mountains, but they're swamps that are kind of set up like this. These, at least, it's very easy to tell that they're mountains. I'm going after the Nyssa? No, no. This is a sign that either another opponent is just playing crazy or something really bad is about to happen to me. It's not that bad. Treasure map's finally getting in on the action. Right at the top. I don't like that one very much. Have I been a judge at a tournament? No. Alright. That was a way to die. I think that's all I got time for for today. Thanks everybody for watching. Those were not the most exciting cube decks. I'm about done with this cube. I think I've done probably everything I want to. What did I win? Grun the Lonely King. And a Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin's a nice one. Thanks for watching. Probably this week coming up, I will have some new Standard content. I haven't really played Standard in a while, so I'll have to kind of start from scratch. But there will be new cards to try out. Should be fun. See you then.